Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. I've been playing around with the new CPE HG100 filament from Filamentum so much that my roll is almost gone and thought it was time that we take a look at this together. So this is going to be a first look and a not review. You ready? Let's do it. So I want to start off today by saying a special mahalo to my supporters over on Patreon. Funds from them allowed me to pick up this roll of CPE right when it was first released by Filamentum and was first available via filament1.com. So thank you very much for your generous support and for helping keeping the channel going so that I can play with new materials to show you guys good new stuff. Now let's talk about the filament. I said in the intro that this is going to be a first look and a not review. By that what I mean is I have not experimented or played with any other manufacturer's CPE filaments. So I don't have a basis to compare it to. So the opinions that I'm going to give you today are based purely on my experience with this filament itself. Um, and I don't have any points of reference beyond that. Now, the filament, if you can see, I've used almost the entire roll, and it is a very beautiful translucent blue. Um, and when it prints out, you can almost see the light shining through it. It allows you to see the infill through just a little bit, but it's not a clear per se. Um, it's just enough to, to let light pass through. And as you can see, I've actually been using it to print parts um, for tweaking and upgrading the Prusa Mark III. I've uh, printed, reprinted the fan guard, um, I'm sorry, the fan shroud, and I've printed some guards to so I don't stick my fingers into the uh, Noctua fan or the front blower. I've also printed for a, from a previous video the uh, the filament holder and carry handle as well as the control board case with the cutout on the back here for the Raspberry Pi which you can see here uh, this was done for the video that I did on the Pi Zero install uh, with the 3D KC prepin Pi I've also printed some other samples just to show you. I blew through a lot of this filament, like I said, just trying different things and, and seeing what it does. Let's talk about the filament properties themselves really quick as I kind of go into this. It prints very similar to PLA as far as putting it down in the way that it sticks to each other in a way that it sticks to your bed. With the PEI sheet on the Prusa Mark III, I was able to print directly on the PEI. I did not need a separation layer. It sticks very well to it. I got no warping out of it. Um, and I didn't need to add glue stick or anything else to enhance that stick like you might with other materials. It's a very strong material and it's UV stable. So if you consider PETG, it prints very similar to PETG. Um, at the, that range of temperatures, you're going to be wanting to print in the 250 range with about 90 degrees on your bed. So it is a hotter filament to print. And as you can see on the uh, the steamboat benchy here, um, there, there's not much, but it does string a little bit like PET just. You can pull a lot of that out with retraction, but some of it you'll have to clean off manually at the end. And you've heard me say it before, I call it, I refer to this more as, as spider webbing because it's just, it's so minor that it flakes off or brushes off with your hand. It's not like your typical stringing in globs. Um, this was a, a, a throwaway part, a failed part for this. Um, and it's got a very high, 
strength. It's very difficult to break. This was printed at about 20% infill, so it's not that solid. And you could tell that I had to get some leverage on there. To print something like this, I don't know if I could actually do it by hand. I can't uh, without a larger fulcrum to do it. So it's really strong in that manner. Um, you can tell, unlike a PETG, it doesn't really shatter. It kind of holds itself together a little bit more. Um, I would kind of correlate that more to like the way a piece of safety glass breaks versus a, the splintering or the shattering of a regular piece of glass. Started printing out a new bezel for this as well that I haven't put on yet. It says original Brimmy. Um, Brimmy, if you hadn't caught it on social media, is what I had named the Mark III. It's after uh, Sir Brian May or Dr. Brian May. And of course, this was a um, one of the control case options. I had printed two different ones. So you can see the color of the filament and how nicely that it prints and how smooth the first layers are. But you can also see the little bit of spider webbing that I mentioned here. So all in all, um, of course, a couple of other quick prints to show you is I did the T-Rex and it printed very, very nicely and it flexes nicely um, out of the box. Roar. And of course, a couple more upgrade parts for the Prusa Mark III that will eventually go on it. That is the uh, strain relief for the bed. Um, and I felt it was strong enough and sturdy enough that I printed a guitar holder for it. This will uh, screw and attach to a stud on the wall with three screws and it'll support an electric or an acoustic guitar. Um, this is about 25% infill and it's really strong. I'm not going to try to break it because I actually want to use it. But even on thinner, smaller pieces like this fan guard, it's still really, it doesn't have the flex that PETG tends to do. I mean, it's, it's obviously it's flexing, but it's not soft like PETG is. Uh, you don't feel like you can dig your thumbnail into it. Um, I, I would say it's, it's more akin to a finished ABS product versus, um, or I'm sorry, uh, a PLA product, you know, where it's, where it's fairly rigid um, versus an ABS product, which is kind of feels soft and flexible, which is more like PETG. CPE is also highly chemical and UV resistant as well, uh, per the manufacturer. So it's a good choice for printing things for use outside or in your vehicles or things that are going to get a lot of UV exposure. Um, I plan on using it for parts for some projects that I'm working on for the PO Poly Moai that are going to be exposed to the uh, UV curing process so that I don't have to worry about them degrading. So all in all, I would say that for myself, I've found my favorite new material. Um, I really like this. Now that said, it's about 46 to 40, 45 to 46 dollars a roll, I think, currently, unless you catch it on a sale uh, in the US. So it is not a cheaper filament and it's not going to compete you know, in the $20, $30 price range filaments. If you're using this, you're using it for a reason. But with that said, uh, when you have an alternative choice to PETG, something that seems like it has a little bit more tensile strength, it's, it's a really good option. So stay tuned for more videos using the filament. I think I'm going to be picking this up as often as I can, as often as the budget allows. It's a great filament for practical projects that need strength and stability. And uh, I'm also going to start looking out to see if there's other manufacturers that are producing CPE as well, because I'd like to have another baseline to be able to compare it to or to be able to say which one I like better and the strengths and pros and cons and all that of both of them. All right, so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this first look and uh, not a review of the, um, the Filamentum CPE HD100. If you want to play with it, I will throw a couple of links down in the description below. They're not affiliate links. 
Uh, of course, I do have my Amazon and other affiliate links down there if you'd like to help out the channel so I can buy more of this good stuff um, for projects like upgrading the Mark III and, and other things. Uh, please use those affiliate links and, and help where you can. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it allows me to do cool stuff. So that's all I've got for you today. We'll see you next time on Practical Printing. Aloha.